Hello students, parents, my dear viewers, a very warm welcome to EduPath, the journey of success. Our web interview series brought to you by Expert Group of Institutions Alumni Association. This is a series where we speak to successful people so that we, get, we are ready to get motivated to face difficulties in the path of success. Our guest today is a renowned doctor a teacher, a guide, and a philosopher to many students as well as his peer group in the medical field. His kindness, craftsmanship in the surgery, everlasting smile, and simplicity, vast knowledge has not only given him a special place in the people's heart, but in some houses his photo is in the puja room with the other god. Our guest is none other than renowned orthopedic surgeon, Professor Dr. M. Shantaram Shetty. Hello, Doctor. Welcome to EduPath. Thank you. Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to quickly introduce our guest to our viewers. Professor Dr. M. Shantaram Shetty completed his MBBS from the Government Medical College, Mysore in 1964 and MS Ortho from Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi in 1970. He also holds FACS, FIAMS, FICS Ortho and has been conferred with FRCS from the Royal College of Surgeons, England. He has over 40 years of experience in teaching medical students and has trained more than 300 postgraduate students in orthopedics. He was the first Dean of KSEGDE Medical Academy and later the first Vice Chancellor of NITE, a deemed to be university. An active academician, he has presented over 200 scientific papers at international, national, and state conferences with 47 publications to his credit. He has delivered expert lectures at national and international conferences and symposia. He has received the best paper award four times and has co-authored a book and written a chapter in one. He has occupied several important academic positions like member of the Senate, Academic Council, Board of Studies of several Indian universities for the National Board and Medical Council of India. He is also the postgraduate examiner to the National Board of various Indian universities and international SICOT examiner in orthopedics held in different parts of the world. Being a multifaceted personality, he has associated with the uh, service and non-government organization and has been responsible for their overall growth. He is the president of uh, Vocational Rehabilitation Center since 1980, which trains physically challenged children in computer education. He is also associated with the, the Dakshina Kannada Handicapped Association and uh, Indian Red Cross. The Lions Club of Mangalore has been a great beneficiary due to Dr. Shetty's association with it and in promoting its a social cause. He was instrumental as governor of Lions Club in at establishing one of its kind in South Karnataka, the Lions Artificial Limb Center. He was also instrumental in establishing Lions Blood Bank. As the president of Indian Orthopedic Association, he relent relentlessly took up various socially re uh, relevant initiatives to help the needy patients. He was the AO Foundation Switzerland trustee from India during the period from 2005 to 2010. He has been nominated by AO Foundation Switzerland as chairman, AO Trauma India, Professor Shetty is the recipient of several honors and fellowships such as the Karnataka Rajasava Award for Meritorious Service in the Field of Medicine in 1991, Yevo Fellowship to Germany in 1983, 
AADO Fellowship to Netherlands and UK in 1996, Ranawat Fellowship to USA in 1989, International Lions President Award for the work for Physically Handicapped Indian Medical Association Award for Meritorious Service in 1999, International Lion President's Award for Leadership in 1996, Rotary Vocational Service Award in 2000, Vandana Award Rotary for Meritorious Service in the Field of Medicine 2004, it just goes on. He has been a regular faculty for AO principal, OAP and advanced and master's course held in India and various other Asia Pacific countries. In short, Professor Dr. Shetty has made a mark as a teacher, educationist, administrator and a surgeon. We are privileged to have you here uh, with us today, Doctor. A warm welcome to you once again. Thank you. Before we begin with the questions, I would like to remind our viewers to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell icon for regular updates. You can also send your questions to the guest live by WhatsApp on the number displayed on your screen. That is 829-64-90168. Welcome to you, Doctor. Right. Doctor, I've taken uh, quite a number of uh, interviews of yours, but every yes. time we were talking about one or the other bone problems of different okay. parts of the body. But today, we'll be speaking from the perspective of students. Either students yes. who, who are aspiring to get into medical college or maybe our alumni who are studying in the medical college. So we are all really excited to interact with you. Students will be asking questions through uh, WhatsApp number. Uh, so sure. my first question is, Doctor, since yes. I have seen uh, people praying for you in their homes during evening prayer, when they pray for their health, they pray for your health also. I, I have witnessed this and we too do that. So. I want to ask how a doctor can become more than a doctor, okay? So yeah. because uh, uh, our students are there, uh, they when we, if you if you see any frequently asked questions by students, they speak only about uh, need. But I feel it's important to understand how a doctor can become more than a doctor. So how it is possible? So you were well, too kind in your words uh, to say that I'm I'm being paid upon, but uh, it is only kindness of people, and uh, it is reciprocal. If you are kind to patients, because any patient who comes to you, whatever specialty he belongs to, or a general practitioner, he comes with pain, pain not only a bodily pain, it is a mental mental agony, as well. the economic problems all coupled together. A doctor who treats only only the ailment is not a true doctor. He's the machine. He just he treats the ailment and goes. But a but a doctor who treats the mental part of it, the agonizing part of it, the economical part of it, and the family background of it. Why I say this is many patients who are poor cannot afford a particular treatment. And if you say well. This costs this much and the, the, it is a business. It is not a doctor's profession. Well, many times the family problems and old, old, old uh, elderly patient is admitted and the family, the children do not look after, look after them. Then you will have to call them and tell you, you are going to become old one day and it is up to you to look after them, look after your parents. And, and that's a law, law has to be bound. So a doctor is not a family physician of old olden days is unfortunately is going off <laughs> because a family physician is a part of the family who looks after not only the patient the family as a whole and the, as as a part of the family. So however uh, profession he may be in his profession uh, an expert he should be a family man to tackle all aspects of the patient and not just the ailment side. Then only I think. The patients will realize, well, he is my family man, then, then he takes you in his arms. 
Okay. Uh, doctor, usually when we uh, get into the success story of many doctors, uh, we see that usually either they are academicians, okay, they teach somewhere, okay, or they are practicing. It cannot, not that it is, but when I look at you, you uh, are uh, in both the places you are actually doing the best. So how it is possible, it is rarely where one can happen that you are academician as well as you are practicing in a very, very nice way. So how it is possible, see doctor, when I'm asking you, it's not that I'm asking about you because students should yeah. know that what is Understand. about medical That's profession right. because everybody, they know that they need to write NEAT, but it's yeah. what about yeah. after NEAT, how they need to be a human yeah. being. So that's what I wanted to know. It, yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It's a great question for every every student who aspires to be a doctor or a, or a student who, who has already joined a medical medical school. Well, why I say that is, uh, as you rightly said, uh, the doctors, we, the, many of us are academicians. So I firmly believe unless a doctor is knowledgeable, he has no right to practice. Unless he knows what he is doing, if I do not know how to operate on a particular patient, I should not operate on it. If I do not know how to diagnose a particular disease, I must take the help of a person who can diagnose better for the better kind of patient. So it is, it is, it is, it is not the ego, ego, ego personality of a, of a person, but it is for the betterment of the patient finally. So one should be perfect in his knowledge. If he cannot tackle it, he should, he should make a person who is knowledgeable to treat that. Once he knows what it is, it is not the just the academic part of it, but it is the other part of the fine which is which is equally important. So he should he should make the patient comfortable, because we see in, in all the all the medical books it is now now it is proved beyond beyond doubt that the walk of the hand of a doctor is much more important, and the spine of a patient is equally important than the medicine or the surgical touch which he, which, he, which he derives. So what is important is assurance to the patient that he will be all right. And we are doing our best and leave the rest to God. And the, once the, it has been proved beyond doubt in uh, the scientific field, if the patient says, well, I'm going to be all right, he will be all right many times. And many, many times the elderly people we see, unfortunately, they say, well, I am at the end of my life. I, I, I don't want to leave it. That is a negative approach. Hmm. A negative approach should be brought to a positive approach when you treat, treat a patient. So it is, uh, it is very important. You should be knowledgeable. You should be compassionate. And you should be loving to the patient. That is, that is very important. Okay, doctor. See, you have a vast experience of 40 years of professional life as well as other life. So I just want to know mm -hmm. that what is this success story? In short, if you have to tell, is it like a, just uh, because usually they say that uh, success is not free. This is my favorite uh, yeah. statement. I don't know what you yeah, say yeah. about it. What was your success story? How yeah. difficult or how easy it was to reach this stage? That's true. Success is a great, uh, great word. And it is a confusing word as well. Success just doesn't come to people just, just with money or with, or with knowledge. Or it is a combination of different things. The most important thing is that one has to one has to work hard. Many times we we'll, oh my my uh, my neighbor or my my colleague is so lucky he has attained this stage. They do not understand how many hours midnight lamp he has burnt himself. People do not understand how how hard he has worked all through his life to achieve that. That, that they do not understand. They think, oh, he is very lucky. He, the, the, he, yeah. has such a, he, he has become professor in such a young age. But, but he has worked for it. Number one is working hard. There is no alternative to working hard for, for, for a success mm. story. Number two, number two is, especially for a doctor, uh, to be successful, uh, one should not be greedy. Many times we see you on the film stars coming into this thing blaming doctors. Mm. Many times, uh, the general public blame doctors because they are charging so much. Many times, uh, the, the media media condemns the doctors because they, they take cuts. That's a, it, 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 it is bad, but it may be a small percentage of, of the doctor's profession. 
you take any professional Correct. for that matter even the media people or even the print stars who play in their in their profession itself there are so many people, black sheep so it is it is it is easy to blame a profession but we should see once we have taken because doctors profession is entirely different from so many other mm. professions once we have taken time going to hippocrates is all the time i am going to be a doctor he becomes a little different person than other profession so you you think of a lawyer you think of a chartered accountant you think of an engineer that's a, a different ball game altogether whereas here you are dealing with somebody's life somebody's pain somebody's some the everyday life so you will have to be very considerate as far as money is concerned or so that is that is the other thing is what i mentioned about greed 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 is is one one part in anybody's life which kills after all there is enough in this world for every man's need but there is enough for even a single man's greed it is a, it is very well said if you go on you are greedy what do you do with the money after you have everything god has given you a good, a good family a good good house to live in what else do you want so that is that is the satisfaction that so every doctor i feel for a youngster he should have a plan in his life what he wants to be and be ambitious in life ambition is important to reach success unless you are ambitious are you and the most important thing is in life don't procrastinate procrastinate is a very great word that i will do it tomorrow tomorrow will never come whatever you want to achieve do it today that is today is the day for you life is before you so do it today and leave the rest yeah. to god and believe in god he is always there to help you apart from actually the- dr uh, richard deshpande uh, a second phd student from dharwad was asking about the qualities of a doctor uh, that you already answered so she i hope she got her yeah. answer now vivek is asking that uh, you studied in uh, mmc uh, mysore medical college and uh, he is asking yeah. whether you were a topper there <laughs> no i was i was never a topper i was i, I was i was i was very interesting it is a very interesting mm. question i should prepare that uh, child because uh, we did a study on our own just like our medical study I, we did a study on our own what has happened to my own classmates we joined 100 in the uh, my medical college that was the time what has happened to them we had a get together uh, after 25 years we had a get together after 50 years okay. i hope it in mangalore it, you may be astonished to know i should not say the gold medal i should not really uh, tell the gold medal is you do not win the gold medal gold medals are there they they do very well but the best of the physicians and surgeons were the middle class middle middle people who played who danced <laughs> who sang who did everything every everything in that classroom i mean why because doctors profession is specially involves the human touch of a person it's only the playground it's only the music hall it's only the drama drama stages that you understand another person you mix with people mm-hmm. otherwise you, you the many of the gold medals have done extremely well it is wonderful to be a gold medal mm-hmm. medalist but this is our study which has proved that you need not be a gold medalist to reach the top of the world and you can reach the top of the world in spite of all okay there is a medical student asking here sir what is the best way to start a new hospital now the hospital yeah, it's the best way to start a plan anything in life you will have to plan in life if you do not plan you plan to fail Uh, just i want to uh, want to start a hospital and that i get the money from the bank i start now you have to plan yeah. you have to plan the location where you want to build the hospital you want to see what where where your patients will really come from and the clientele and whether you are able to able to able to run that hospital on your own because depending on other people is is a difficult task as an administrator if you can because nowadays the nowadays you, you get uh, the class uh, the, the a grade hospitals i would i won't name them but they are all run by administrators administrators will not a doctor should administer that's what i have 
written in my new book that an administration of a hospital should be done by done a by a doctor, not, not not by MBA. Mm. Why? Because an MBA will not understand the problems of patients. Mm. A doctor will understand. If he comes for a concession, an MBA will say, "You pay the money like a business in a hotel and go out." Whereas, whereas here, it is the, the doctor will understand the agony and he will solve the problem. Yeah, I still remember so, when. If, they, if that uh, child wants to start a hospital, yeah. they will have to plan. A planning will take time. It can't be done overnight. Yeah. Uh, uh, doctor, this, I feel, yeah, uh, there was, this is about you now, once again. Uh, see, there was an era where uh, for anything, any kind of bone problem, they used to go to one orthopedic. Whether it is a knee problem, back problem, or uh, neck problem, yeah. it won't yeah. matter. But now, yeah. It has gone to super speciality, from there to sub super specialities, yeah. Uh, yeah. and Very many many people of your era already vanished from the field, or they took retirement. But you yeah. are still in the field, okay? You are doing just like any other maybe a person of forties. So you actually children used to ask, call some youngsters. I want to tell you all children here that. Doctor, if you meet, you will understand that his enthusiasm, if you see, he is younger than us. He will smile more than us. So that is the spirit. So that's why I'm asking, even professionally, how you kept at par because robotics have taken uh, the place of doctors. There are so many things which are going on. Uh, in that era, how you are keeping yourself at par with yeah, others? Exactly. That, uh, that's a great question. Even to my colleagues should understand that. And even the even the, even the students, medical students who are like to be doctors of tomorrow. So the medical field, uh, like all other sciences, not only that, medical field is one which has changed. So much. Every every year it changes. That's why an armchair surgeon or a physician had no place to play in the present arena. So what is what is happening? What what I taught just ten years ago to my students is not even good enough in the to be written in the history books. What what I am what I have, what surgeries I have done ten years ago is completely obsolete because changes have taken so so rapidly. Yes. So the only solution is. One, if you are practicing, you will have to be adept with the latest changes. You may not be able to do everything. You may not be able to do robotic surgery. You may not be able to do the latest things. But you should know how, how it is done. So that if if your, your, your expertise, you cannot do that, you send it to the best person who does that. And that is, that is, that is the best way to go. go to the and the best way is to attend conferences. Now it is in the COVID time. I was telling I was telling you very kindly that you may not believe. Morning I had a, a, a virtual uh, web, 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 web yeah. meeting. Almost every 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 day we have a discussion mm. on something. So that so that you learn. You did not read the book. Books will not. They, somebody an expert telling you well this is the best way. I have studied that mm. and I, this is my presentation. You learn that. And now it has virtual has become such a such an important media. The surgical, surgical uh, uh, hmm. clearance of a surgical, surgical event is so adaptably done. Hmm. If you, a hip exposure and a hip replacement is shown so beautifully that you feel that uh, you are doing it. So that that could be you will have. One has to spend time. However old you are, if you want to survive in the field, you will have to run with anger, anger people. And and you enjoy it, enjoy it because otherwise you will have to retire. But I always tell tell my colleagues, my my own classmates or juniors, do not retire, because whatever you can do to the people, do it. Uh, doctor, there is uh, one more question from the students. Uh, yeah. oh, according to you, because you, since you are a doctor, she is asking, what is the, that is uh, uh, Atharva is asking. Uh, according to you, what is the best time to study? Yeah, that was the the, the, as for the Vedas. The best time is is the is the is the early morning. Even uh, the best time as as for the Vedas is between four to six. Four to five is the ideal time. Oh, okay. that's a, that that's the best time. Okay. But many of us cannot do it. Many of us, many of us, it it depends on the habit which you have. Mm -hmm. 
I think this is Vedas is one of the greatest of the epics. Mm. I believe Vedas has given us so much which no other no no other uh, epics have given. So as for Vedas, four to five is the best time. But you will have to adapt yourself to your convenience. So in a household where you cannot get and disturb other people, you adopt your time and whichever time where you can concentrate is the best time. What is important is concentration on your studies. Concentrate on a particular time and achieve whatever you have. Uh, doctor, now uh, earlier uh, students used to write a CET to get into medical college. Now it is changed to NEET. Uh, so when there was a shift, students were very disturbed. But now also, at any time, because a new education policy 2020 is going after implementation, something else can happen. So there is a kind of uh, for students uh, that at any moment something can change. So, but whether this change should matter a student, whether it is CET, NEET, or tomorrow something else, whether it should matter, uh, that, that is the question. How they need to be prepared to write an entrance exam? That is again a great question for the government to take note of and our politicians to take note of. Because uh, they change the policy so often. Now, as you said, the education policy 2020 has come in with uh, our own uh, Dr. Kastiri Rangan, who has, yeah. was, uh, who has taken it. And it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful policy which, which, which is undertaken. Our only problem is if it is taken, it has to be implemented by mm. It has to be implemented just because then in, in the five years and it should not change. So that is the biggest problem for our students. But our students adopt themselves, especially our Indian students, they adopt themselves so well. Whether it is CET, whether it is NEET, they adopt themselves so much. So well. Imagine the NEET, NEET some of your students in, in who have passed in expert have got 99.900 percent It is unbelievable. Correct. You know what? Yeah. So they they adopt themselves to the changes. So that is that is the greatness of our students. So that don't worry, what whatever changes come, you'll have to adopt. That is the way of life. So if it is rain, well, adopt to the rain. If it is sun, adopt to the sun. That is the way of life. Okay. This is one more question for my own interest to two academicians. Uh, doctor, after this uh, change to need. Whether it has yes. affected the uh, medical college the, uh, in terms of quality of students coming in, is there any? No. No, no it yes. hasn't. See, the best of the students might go to the best of the college. It is natural. Yeah. Even before it was happening. Mm -hmm. So, best of the college, they, they, they get the best of them. But need not be, again, when I, when I, when I told you, the, as the, the question was asked whether the gold medalists do well or the, or the media of the students mm -hmm. do well. Mm -hmm. A student who has passed from All India Institute of Medical Science, which is supposed to be the best of the world, or TMC below, or a student who has who has passed from from a so-called mediocre college, if he has the initiation, if he has if he has the if he has the will, he can go up to that level. So it does not matter; it is individualistic. The majority of the students from All India Institute may be doing well. A student in a media college can also do well if he has if he has the will. Okay. Uh, Doctor, many students like Sadiq, uh, Nadar, and Anushri Reddy, they are asking uh, yeah. uh, give some tips as a daily mantra to prepare for need and also give us confidence to achieve our goal. Yeah. Many students are asking yeah. repeated questions. Yes. Yeah. No, as I, as, I, as I rightly said, the, the one girl asked about the hospital building. It's, yeah. You have to plan, it, plan your day. Many of us fail in our uh, daily life because we do not plan. See, many, many of the students do not plan for the whole year. They think they can, they can read for the last three months and for three times. So it has to be an everyday affair. Everyday affair that you plan that I will read for three hours or two hours or three hours, depending on your capacity. And plan it well, and see that your whole portion is covered, and you are you are you are at the top. Now, luckily, unlike our days when when we studied, there was no review of your of your learning, there was no uh, the sessional examination, there was one just final examination we had. Now you people are so lucky that every week, every month, every every quarterly there is an examination for you. So you have a chance to review yourself. So you will have to change accordingly. 
that if you want to achieve the highest goal, you will have to run the business. Uh, doctor, we see lots of implementation of technology, robotics, artificial intelligence, and uh, computer navigation in the surgery. So all these things. Ashwin uh, Nayak is asking, I'm not a person with a background of medical science or biology, but more yeah. in physics and mathematics. I see that yes. increasingly medical field was incorp uh, is incorporated interdisciplinary approaches and I am curious mm -hmm. to know how, uh, how you view recent mm -hmm. medical advances are impacting medical sciences and broaden the role of doctors. Yeah, that's a great question again depending on, on, on our present uh, system. Dr. Kasuri Rangan uh, uh, the, the, and his team has rightly, rightly put See, we were, we were, till now, or most of our education, whether it's engineering or medical or agriculture, was compartment. They have, in their own, with their own vision, they have said it has to be interdisciplinary. Mathematics is the basics of all sciences. If a, if a person is good in mathematics, and even in physics, he will do well. It is wrong that a doctor should know only the biological aspects of it or the biology. No, if he has a good mathematics background, he will do much better. Especially in the present, present uh, the, you, you said the robotics, artificial intelligence, for the, all that to learn, the mathematical background is extremely important. That's why in the new education policy, uh, the Kassir Rangan has really brought out those very uh, the important points that it has to be interdepartmental, it has to be interdisciplinary, so that each science is intermingled with other so the, not only extracurricular with curricular with uh, the science with maths with biology with commerce and arts and they will have multiple entry system that's the good thing if i if i feel i want to learn music like uh, dr usha so that they will they will have to learn music that's a, that's a great opportunity because we all never had that opportunity so you must have a hobby if you have if you like a hobby you must be given an opportunity to do that that is, that is the basis of the presentation. Doctor, maybe this is the best thing what you can tell to our students because I have seen our uh, most of the uh, neat aspirant students, they don't want to study mathematics. They say that we are neat aspirants, neat aspirants. Maybe... That is the wrong attitude, so, yes. That we all did the same mistake because we thought we, thought we are going to be the, going for medicine or many of many of our many of our mm. and forgot about uh, mathematics. <laughs> Forgot even even physics for that matter. It is so important. Okay. So the physics, all all our uh, now robotics or everything is based on mathematics and physics combined together. Unless you understand that, yeah. you won't understand anything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, relating to the same question, Ashwin Naik's question, I want to ask you something, Doctor. See, if they are already uh, they are into engineering, okay. Uh, what is the chance that they come into medical field for this kind of uh, medical related researches? Is it any possibility? Yeah, that is, yeah, that is a great possibility because the, now, now it is uh, bio, biomedical, biomedical uh, mm. branch has evolved so much. Where, where the biology and the medical part of it is combined together with, with physics. So the, every aspect of it is biomedical okay. So if you, if you really under, want to understand a particular disease and how to cure it, it is important. So okay. it is not only the cellular cellular level of it, but the, mm. but the mechanical aspect of it, where, where it can be turned into deviation, where the cellular modulation can be done with, with biology, with, with mechanics, that is, that is the modulation which is with the gene modulation, with various mm. modulation which is taking place. Okay. Uh, then... There is uh, one more student, uh, Tejas R, is asking, what is the best way to remember more concepts in a short span? No, the, God has given us uh, a brain. How you train your brain is important. Mm -hmm. So you, you should not, uh, the one should not feel I am dull and the other, other person is very intelligent. It happens. Some people, God has given a higher IQ, he can understand better, he can do better. But a person who has a lower IQ can train himself to be better. We are not bothered about the child who, who gets 99%. He will get it in spite of anything. Whereas what we are bothered is 60%, 70%, 80%. It is, there is a great pleasure. I always tell, in, tell, tell amongst our students, 
There's a great pleasure in making a donkey a horse, and you should not make a horse a donkey as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So it is it is very important that the student who is lagging behind has to be helped. No student should feel that I I I do not remember things. He can remember by by persuasion, by energy, by working hard. He can he can he can adopt himself. Yeah. Uh, doctor, one day what happened is my one old student, uh, he called and he said, I wanted to speak to you. And he came, uh, in fact, from Mysore Medical College. He came to meet yeah. me and uh, as he reached, he just started crying. And I said, what happened? Then he said, uh, my brother, who is already uh, three years younger to me, already finished his engineering, got into campus, he's earning, and I'm still asking money from my father or from my mother for my uh, for my education. In fact, my younger brother is now telling that he will help me in the education. So that means medical is a very long uh, process. So how to keep themselves uh, really rooted and uh, confident that to finish this for yeah. such a long time? You must tell them. The question was asked by many people. You must uh, tell them and that. Uh, an engineer retires at the age of 55 or 60 or 60, 62 at the maximum. And if he's in a job and if he's in his private, he can continue. But a doctor never retires. Never retires in his life. Many, many of us doctors go on till 78, 75, 80. They, they're gone. They're go, gone with their profession. What early period they lost, they make it up in the later period. With a, with a betterment, betterment. So let them not be dissuaded. That my brother, it happens. If there is a brother who is earning, of course, an engineer who will, in four years he joins Infosys, he joins uh, the, any any of the companies, he gets uh, the tax salary. And here is a person who, who for post graduation yeah. will be up 30, to 30. 32. Yeah. <laughs> but patience. Once once he has taken up that, he has to be patient. That there is always a light at the end of the tunnel, and he will see that light here. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Anusha is asking, being in a hypocritical society where there are always different opinions of people uh, makes us question our, our own decision or choices. Did you ever face such situation and how did you deal with it? No, every day is, every day is, uh, every day in life is, is a challenge. How we face a challenge is important. Whether you are a doctor, an engineer, whether you, whatever you are, you do not know what is in store for you. For it, 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 it may be good, it may be bad, it may be, it may be anything. How you face the challenge is important. You should not be dismayed why it happened to me. It can happen to anyone. Okay. Suddenly, I see many many patients crying after an accident, coming with a broken leg. Why did it happen to me? I'm I am a God loving person. I have done everything. But why did this happen to me, doctor? I tell them you'll be better off in another two or three months' time. Think of a day which is which will which will be brighter rather than what is happening. So you must always think that what a brighter day will come rather than the remorse that why it happened. Okay. Uh, doctor Dhanya is asking: Is it a good uh, decision to study medicine abroad? No, the, the, it is it is not a good decision at all. I would say if, if there is a chance, always study it in India and then you go abroad. See, there are the problem for them is uh, there are various. It may be in Russia, it may be in China, it may be in Poland, it may be in Ireland. Various various countries have started as a business prospective, mm -hmm. where the students pay a fairly a large sum of money and join. The problem is when they come back. They, they will they, they will have to appear for another exam by the MCI, which now now the, the modulation of it. And unless they pass that examination, they can't practice in it. And they have no place to go. They can't be practicing in Poland if they, they can't get a proper job. They can't be practicing in China. They can't be practicing in Russia. So it becomes a, that every time I go to the MCI office, I see the, the nearly about 50 students uh, standing with a placard that do just the tour. Because they, they have no place. They have failed here many times and they are repeating. Okay. So they, they, are, they are fairly well trained. Many of them are trained. But uh, I would not say they are so well trained as our Indian, Indian universities mm -hmm. too. Indian universities, we followed the British system. Now they are, we are modifying it. So it, it, it is better that if you have a chance, you study that. Don't be enamored by going to Russia or China. I have seen 
the parents crying that I sent my child there and I'm in trouble now. Or the child crying that I have, I'm in trouble for the seven years I do not have a job. Uh, what about uh, 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 finishing uh, maybe uh, up to post-graduation level in India and after for super specialities and sub-super specialities outside? That is that is wonderful. I always tell my tell my students you must go abroad. Mm. Why you go abroad? Not that you have, you haven't learned here, mm. but when you go abroad, especially the UK or United States, Australia, New Zealand, or wherever, wherever one of the Western countries, or even Hong Kong or uh, Singapore, you learn discipline. Yep. The discipline of work. Many times I feel very sad when our students, uh, when there is eight eight o'clock uh, class in our hospital for uh, for the postgraduate, they come at eight fifteen. No, it should not mm. happen. That's why we have made a rule: we close the door at eight o'clock. Mm. If no, if anybody comes after eight, he is not allowed. So that discipline we learn. I see in Germany a surgeon, senior most surgeon, comes at seven o'clock in the morning, he leaves the theater at seven o'clock in the mm. evening. And many times you would not have seen the sun for years together, except on Saturday and Sunday, mm. because because that is the routine of that life. Mm. So that discipline is there, and the work workmanship, whatever it is, they, because they they could afford, they have done that. But in our country now, we have hit the stage that we can afford, so we must adopt. And every every student should go abroad to at least understand what the other people are mm. doing. How good we are, and we can be better, or we can give them what what we know better. Our students see the whole NHS in England is run seventy percent by either operations or mainly by Indian Indian doctors. The thirty percent of doctors in in the United States hospitals are Indians. Many many of these film stars go to go to. Uh, either Anderson or or Hopkins or one of the hospitals, and they see an Indian doctor operating. Mm. So it is. So it is. So it, uh, they have made a name. In their own. So it is. We go abroad to learn that, but they must come back yeah. because India has given them what they, what what they are. So the, it is it is up to them to come back and don't stay back. Okay, uh, doctor, you were talking about everybody should see know what is the importance of timing. That's why you need to go abroad. Yeah. I'm asking you because when when you're giving example, the students if it is eight o'clock, they may come at eight ten or eight fifteen, so they may think what's a big deal? Okay, what will happen within ten minutes? Okay, now I'm asking you what is the importance of time that one minute? Yeah, the time to my imagination and my life, time is the most important factor. If you lose your health, a good doctor can treat you and get you all right. If you lose your money, there is always another day where you can earn it. But if you lose your time, it is gone forever. You can't get back that one minute or ten minutes, which mm -hmm. which 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 is lost for you, lost for them. Okay. So time management in one one's life is extremely important. I appeal to the students: the most important thing in your life is time management. How you manage your time every day in your life. Yeah. What is lost for you is lost forever. Mm -hmm. So you have a timetable. How I spend my time every day, you will be effective. Maybe person. here we can continue with the doctor because you are involved into so many activities. You are professional, academic, as well as your NGO. Lots of work you have done. Even when you were governor of Lions Club, you were involved into all these uh, handicapped uh, centers to start everything. So, but students, those who study only, especially even our students, when they are just first PUC or second PUC, they are studying. That, that's it. So, but they say every time that in capital letter, no time. Okay. So, how yeah, that, that is, no yeah, time and that, how you manage the time? That, 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 no, you you have to, the time management is simple. That if you have an ambition that I want to do that, the time will automatically come to you. If you say I will do it tomorrow. The most important thing in life is to say no. Many of us succumb. For everything we say yes, we accept. We go to a party, we lose our time. We go to a we we go to a dinner, we lose our time. We go. If you can afford, you enjoy. That's it. That's the time you keep for your enjoy. Mm. That has to be mm. because it has been well proved that after a success, if you enjoy and have a party, you are you are liberated. Mm. And you are a better person. 
rather than enjoying yourself. Right. You enjoy with your friends. Right. That's the way of life. But for everything, there must be a time. You can't spend your, waste your time in your, once you waste your time, that time is gone. For you. Dr. Sanvi is asking you a question. I think uh, she has seen you personally because she is telling that we have seen you working for more than 16 hours. What is the secret, doctor? <laughs> no, I don't work. <laughs> no. no, I do I do work. My only thing is I see my last patient and go home. Hmm. That was my uh, weakness because I many times patients come from different places of our country and uh, the husband of Mar to make him wait the next day and the, or the next day is, is not not good for a doctor. So I, that's why my timing goes on from the, what where I had to stop at 10 o'clock, it goes on till 11 or 12 or 1 sometimes. But that was the way of life. But COVID has, COVID has brought in more discipline to us that you can't see more than few patients. <laughs> okay. Dr. Vivek is asking, in engineering colleges, there is campus placement. But after completing MBBS and MD, whether to take up government job or work in private hospitals, what did Dr. Shantram sir uh, do at that time? I think he is talking about you when you were young. How you took the decision? That, no, that was, that was the time. Our life was, uh, see, uh, I should uh, mention about the PHU research done by United States, where they divided the people into three independent era which they were called like like us who were born before 1947. We, they, we were all called the traditionals. Then after 1947 to 1962, they were called the baby boomers. And after baby boomers from 1964 to 2000, they were called the XYZ three millennials. And after 2000, they are the millennials. We were all traditionalists. We were we got the best of things in our life. post independent. We, we 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 had the all the all the all the things which 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 anybody could give us, whereas the baby boomers, the next our generation were were achievers, were achievers those who were born up to ninety six they achieved because they wanted to like like doctor your husband mm -hmm. doctor Nike and they were achievers they, they they wanted to do and they they did everything they wanted, but after nineteen sixty five then I mean after seventy the X Y Z especially the Y and Z. The 18th, there was huge competition. Huge competition because of a population, because of education, because so many things. Then, 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 then that was, that was a ra racing going on. So now the, the, you do not have a choice. I had a choice. Mm -hmm. When I passed my MBBS, I could, I could get a government job easily. I joined. The, the next day, I joined in Bangalore Medical College as a lecturer. It was a lecturer given because they, now it is impossible. So but what is important after MBBS is to plan whether you want to become a general practitioner, whether you want to become a super specialist or a specialist, whether you want to want to go abroad, whether you want to serve your own country, what whether you want to, that thing you will have to plan and take the line. Mm -hmm. Then once you plan it, you can you can execute it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, when you are talking about now super specialities and other things, so I wanted to know, doctor, because you are the uh, you were dean of uh, medical college, you were uh, vice chancellor. So with that, maybe your exp experience, how the students need to select their specialization, on what basis? Yeah, that's right. The excellent question because. Many many of the students will not know what special what specialization they once they have decided that I won't remain a general practitioner, I want to specialize. It may be dermatology, it may be orthopedics, it may be general surgery, it may be urology, yes. a super specialty. But he must know that he should have the inclination for it. That he must have the love for it. It is very, very important unless you love your work, you're the best. If I I love bones. Every every bone I love because 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 that has given me everything in life. So yeah. that that love is important. So yeah. if if you take up dermatology and say that tomorrow after three years of your specialization, well, this is a boring subject. Right? No, mm. you decide before that I love that subject. I want to specialize in it. 
there is something special about it. But doctor, sometimes so that, what will happen is maybe uh, one want, wants to do love marriage, but love will not happen. So after arranged marriage, how to love it? In the sense, if you if you don't get the uh, specialization which you want to, you'll have you'll have, you, you'll be a failure if you do not love after marriage. Mm. If you will have to love, you will have to you will have to adopt yourself. Mm. So if you see if you are taken a subject and you feel that you no, there is no other way. Otherwise, you will have to change. There is always a change. But they, 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 like in marriages, you the divorce. That is a different question. But here it is more difficult. Mm. Once you have taken dermatology, you can't come to the general surgery. So it is, it is though people have done it many times because of the, and they they were successful, but it's a waste of so many years of your time. Okay, uh, uh, yeah. uh, doctor, actually, you you were talking about uh, studying it abroad and uh, coming back. See, you had opportunity yes. to stay in some any country which you want. I feel that any country would have accepted you very happily, but you came back. You are here. You are in Mangalore. What made you to come back and? Today, after so many oh, I, years, whether you uh, are happy about it or you regret about it, I'm extremely happy about it uh, because uh, again I gave you an example of my own classmates. Mm -hmm. so what happened was our batch, as I told you, we could go abroad, we could get a government job, we could get anything. We, our choice was ours. Forty-two of our classmates went to the United States. Because those days there, there wasn't even a FMG examination. You could go, they would come and pick you up from the airport because they were they wanted mm -hmm. doctors. That was in 1960. So they would come and many, many of my classmates. So uh, many of us went, uh, went. We saw some of our classmates all, all, already build, built a house, having a yeah. Mercedes Benz car, mm -hmm. and they had that everything. Oh, we, we thought oh, those who have come back could have we done a mistake? Yeah. But when you, when you when you see today our life and and that life, not that I do not do blame, but we are we are much better because what happens is the people's love. Yeah. When 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 I go to the market, so many people recognize me and say uh, say the hello doctor, the, nice to see. You. Yeah. That, that 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 day is done. Mm -hmm. Whereas if the top most surgeon of John Hopkins, if he goes to the mall, nobody recognizes. Correct. Nobody ever says who he mm. is. That, that is important in life, that your recognition is mm. life. It is not money alone and comfort. It is it is all round recognition which is which is important in life to live a good life. Yeah. So my advice advice to you and we owe a owe a great debt to our society, not that I am philosophical about mm. it. For a medical student, medical student, those those of us who have studied in a government medical college, government has spent more than a crore of rupees on each one of us, mm. on level on the private medical colleges. So it is up to us to see that whatever, whatever we can give back to the society, if we can, if we can do it, mm. there is nothing left. Uh, Doctor Prathvi is asking how to keep up to the expectations of the patients while treating them. No expectation of the patient. Uh, there are different expectations for the mm. patient that they should be. The patient thinks that, that uh, doctor has a magic wand that he can he can really cure everything. It is not. It is not true. Uh, he can make a patient comfortable. What is, that is that should be the aim of the patient. With the best of the knowledge which he has, if he can make the patient comfortable and go back to his work as early as possible, that should be the key. So that that should be his aim. The money part should never come in the way of treating a patient. That that, that goes off. You would, a patient many times, patient do come and ask you well, how much will it cost, doctor? What the, the, you tell them very politely it will cost as per any any other this. But we'll see that we'll do our best to see that you are all right. That is that is important. Uh, one more student is asking what should be the mental status of a doctor. Because if I want to become a doctor, what should be my mental status? Patience. Patience. See, the, the biggest uh, attribute of a doctor should be, apart from all that I mentioned, read and all that, it is uh, patience. Many a times, the patient will come with so many problems. And they, will, they may eat your head, but she is the patient. 
So you must be patient. You must be patient to hear this story. If you just come them, oh, that's enough. You tell me that this thing that they lose faith in. You take time and try to control control your anxiety or 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 your time and see that all well, all right. It it looks all right. You will do this. Ah, uh, uh, here one more question. Student is asking, what is the value of knowledge in medical science? Knowledge is paramount. Mm -hmm. Like in if you are. If you do not have knowledge, which has to be converted into skill, and with age it becomes wisdom. Mm. So unless unless you have knowledge, you can't you can't get knowledge skill. And if you are not skilled, you cannot have wisdom. So knowledge is paramount in reaching reaching any point for a doctor or for any other doctor. You will have to be knowledgeable. Uh, doctor, when we look at the doctor, it's very nice. We feel wow, what. Kind of life because everybody will treat because I don't think uh, uh, anybody will give that kind of respect to an engineer or lawyer like how they give it to a doctor. Is that's the fact. Uh, so, uh, no, but it's, it's very it's nice. But what about slowly coming down? Because uh, I must really thank our uh, forefathers for maintaining that standard. Of this. <laughs> that is that is how I. Have I see because that we should not lose. My younger generation of doctors should not lose that, lose that. So that they they should maintain that standards, that that uh, closeness to the patients. As I said, the family physician status mm. still to be maintained. No, but uh, my question is: many students have got that mind that what we are going to uh, sacrifice. How will be our family life? Is it our personal life will be like others? So, what is the a personal life and of any doctor? No, it is, it is a it is a wrong notion that doctors do not have. You take uh, again many studies have been undertaken. The life of a doctor is it is it the, compared to compared to the other families? They have proved beyond doubt, mm. especially the psychiatric and the other other studies which have been undertaken. Uh, the, the randomized studies in different parts of the world. A doctor's life is as as happier as as anybody else's. Mm. It is how you take it is is more important than how you live it. Uh, one more student is asking: When I sit and study, I go blank. Nothing comes to my mind. So how can I concentrate and focus? No, then you will have to you you will have to make up your mind. You you do. No, though, though our uh, I I did not uh, the, I am here not to tell our about our own Indian system. You meditate. Mm -hmm. The yoga is a great science which which our forefathers have given us. But must before any any mentioned about it, he he professed that different types of yogas, not only for the physical strength of it, but the mental strength. Of it. If you do meditation, if you are not concentrating, you do meditation. And uh, the, even even the pranayamas, which is, it's a, it's a great great source of energy. So after a while, to go through the yoga books and see that he concentrates. Concentration comes with with the with the free mind, and he should not think he should not be negative in life. Worst thing in life is to be a pessimist. Be an optimist, and negativity will not re lead you anywhere. Be a positive person. Okay, uh, doctor. We, uh, when we speak about now uh, uh, cell therapy, stem cell therapy, gene therapy, what is the scope for students? Uh, those who do not, because they will, by for some reason, they will not get medical seat, or who cannot afford to go for medical uh, institutions, and uh, they will select some life sciences, taking biology, B.Sc. or later M.Sc. What is the scope for them to come back to medical science for the research or any other form? There is a, there is a great scope in this field which people do not see. It is very unfortunate that every parent thinks that his child should be a doctor or an engineer. It is a very very wrong thing. There is so much of scope. One great misfortune in our education system in our country is that we have we have never encouraged research, research mind. You take the number of uh, Nobel Nobel laureates in our country, except C. V. Raman in in physics, 
Jivel Tagore and uh, Am Amrita's son or Ravi who got recently, they all got it in the country. And the lone doctor who got Nobel Prize was Hargo Bin Kurana, but he had to go to the United States and he's a citizen of the United States. So that shows that our education hasn't given a research mind to our students at all. So it is time that they go into these different fields and do undertake research. The latest, uh, the, as you mentioned about the education policy, has divided our, our institutions into the research-oriented institutions, the teacher-oriented, I mean, uh, teacher-oriented uh, institution, and finally, the autonomous institution. So what is important, this research institution should come up to put these students into research. Okay. Uh, Saujanya is asking, uh, how difficult it is to say, uh, serve as a doctor, and uh, people see doctors as God, so how difficult to save their trust? That is a very important uh, question by the fact that uh, you, will, you, will have, you, will, you will have to keep running. You will have to keep running with all the energy. See, the, the life is such that if you do one mistake, ethically, morally, and 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 your knowledge, knowledge works. So the doctor has to be has to keep abreast with all this, so to survive the onslaught. Very uh, one more very common doubts uh, among student frater fraternity, they, because they see that already artificial intelligence, robotic surgeries are going on. So they are scared that whether these artificial intelligence and the uh, robotics will bring the uh, bring down the demand for doctors. No, the human the human touch of it will still be there. Mm. But as you rightly said, there is always see the, the even you used to mention about stem cell therapy. That rules are so so rigid now that because of the cloning, because of the cloning may come up. They they said stem cell has to has to go in a very very ethical manner. Even with the artificial intelligence or whatever robotic surgery, it has to be done in very ethical. Then only we can we can reach the goal. If it is anything unethical, then it becomes okay. Uh, so Dr. Sohan is asking, is there any situ challenging situation in your life? And how did you overcome that? No challenge. Oh. Every day is a challenge for me. Every patient is a challenge because it's a very difficult challenging situation. Many, many challenging situations when I got ill, I, had, I thought that that's the end of life. I, I got well again. So that was the most challenging part of my life when I was in 40. So that uh, that it, it all by the help of God, with the, the help of our own family, I got through. So everything, when it, luckily uh, in the, in my medical profession, God has God has God has God has been very kind. The, every challenge has been given. If I am in very great difficulty in a particular patient, I pray God <laughs> somehow it has come. So think of God and do your work. It will, it will yeah. work. Uh, doctor, already we have overshoot with the time, but uh, last yeah. question I want to ask you in yeah. Yeah. being yeah. so successful in life, uh, with your experience, how much one should rely on luck? No, that's why I, when I became the dean of the medical school, I put a big board, uh, big board in my in mind. Lucky are those who work for that. Job. Okay. <laughs> That, that board is still there in the, in the team. Yeah. So if you work for that, luck will automatically come. Yeah. If you guide and praying that I want, I want that God, God will not give you. God will give you if you work for that and pray. He will, he will always give you. Uh, doctor, it is really, really, I, I know that our students, our alumni association, everybody, we are so lucky to hear you because some of them may not be knowing that uh, how busy you are. You are such an elegant person. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for being here and I apologize with the your patients who are waiting for you there. <laughs> so you have taken such a great time and... Uh, from all the students, everybody, it's a great pleasure and thank you so much, Doctor. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, dear viewers, next Sunday, we have twice the inspiration with the two episodes on the same day. On 29th November at 11 a.m., we will have a highly decorated...
Lieutenant General P. G. Kamath, and then joining us at 5 p.m. in is the Chief National Coach of the Indian Badminton Team and Padma Bhushan awardee Pulela Gopichan. Do join us for both these sessions and uh, take this opportunity to interact with the, these successful personalities. Thank you and uh, have a wonderful week. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.